<laughs> it's fine. I just never want to see it again. Sometimes you want to have a people over. You want to have a party. You want to have the people in the backyard. You want to just throw drinks into a cooler. You got your soft drinks. You got your waters. You got your, your seltzers. You got your beers. You got your hard seltzers. But what if you want to have cocktails? What if you want to have cocktails and not make them? Today on How to Drink, we're going to get to the bottom of the hot new canned, pre-made, bottled cocktails for your party on How to Drink. Let's do it. I'm going to slam a jack. How did I pick what we're gonna do? Because some things are in cans, they're ready to drink, but they're seltzers. So here were my criteria. And I, I can't promise that I nailed this every time, but I did my best. It can't say seltzer on the can. It cannot say brewed or malt alcohol. It has to specify actual spirits being in there. And ideally it should have the word cocktail. But if it says it's got real spirits in it and it doesn't say the word seltzer, I think I can call it a canned cocktail. Also, ideally we're looking for stuff that's higher in ABV. The reality is there's not a lot of really high ABV stuff on the market and we did do a really good job of covering that a couple years ago and some of that stuff that is like a little harder to find like post meridium they make wonderful drinks you know you can buy them online you can use curiata go to drink.curiata.com you'll find them there they may not show up in your local liquor store this was kind of a survey of what was available in my local liquor stores so some of these are going to be a little lower proof like this jack daniels and coke uh that's about seven percent and it tastes like a Jack and Coke. I personally don't know how many of these I could drink at a party because they're very sweet, but I also couldn't drink a bunch of Cokes at a party either. Um, I would feel like poop. But it does taste like a Jack and Coke, so it's really hard to find fault with it. We got a zero sugar one coming up now. I hate that. What is that, aspartame? Fucking hate that, that is disgusting. Be gone, foul wench. No, that's truly gross. I mean, if you like Diet Coke, you like Diet Coke, but I am not Diet Coke, people. I can't believe there are people, I know that people are like Diet Coke aficionados. That like feels like licking the inside of an old ashtray or something. That's disgusting. Well, between the two, I got to go with the regular one. And I mean, like, honestly, honestly, you're drinking Jack and Coke at a party, man. You're in for a penny, in for a pound. What are you worried about that fucking sugar versus aspartame aspect? What's up next? We got Jameson coming up. I felt like we were going to do Jack. We should do the other whiskeys. Jameson's got ginger and lime. Doesn't sound bad. This is at 6% ABV. Now, normally I would say that's not really a cocktail at 6%. It met my other criteria though, which is Jameson Irish whiskey, natural ginger, whatever. Jameson Irish whiskey, that was the main thing. Personally, I like that a lot better. I like the ginger ale much better than the Coke. They both don't taste very good. They both have like, I mean, maybe with like a twist of lime in them, that might actually help a lot, you know, like just to satisfy my curiosity. Let's just throw a little lime into each of these. A little zhuzh, a little something extra, you know. Let's see if that helps these up a little bit. Eh, swirl it around a bit. This is the Coke with a little lime in it. Yeah, it's a lot better. Because I'm thinking about it, like I don't know about a Jack and Coke, but like a rum and Coke, I'm putting lime in it, right? Put a little tray of pre-cut limes next to whatever cooler you're serving these out of. It's going to make them a lot better. Yeah, I just saw these the other day. Let's see if these are any good. Bullet has a Manhattan, which is my enemy, and an Old Fashioned, which is my friend. Once, and this is an embarrassing admission, when I was a younger man thinking I knew what the fuck I was doing, I ordered an Old Fashioned meat. And the bartender happily obliged with a room temperature, unstirred, unmixed, foolproof combination of things. I wouldn't even call it a, a cocktail at that point. A little slush. Uh, a slush. Doesn't sound nice. I mean, that's an old fashioned. A twist of orange wouldn't be bad over it, but frankly, it does taste like an old fashioned. I'm kind of impressed. Here's the problem with something like this. This is my thought. You can't just have people like grab one and go. Like they gotta pour it. And you're putting a lot of trust in your guests to pour the right amount. Someone's gonna get stank faced if you leave this bottle out. I think you need to have a responsible adult serve that one to the guest. You can't allow the, uh, the asylum to serve themselves when you're, <laughs> when you're dealing with that. It's a bad situation waiting to happen right there. Here we go, this is the Manhattan. It's fine, it tastes like a Manhattan. I repel at Manhattans. Oh God, I cannot have another sip, I'm sorry. Ever since we did the Manhattan Matrix, I just cannot touch a Manhattan. It's like post-traumatic stress. It's the episode that sent me to the hospital. No, I can't do it. But this is High West's Manhattan, pours six cocktails. It's a lot of alcohol. It doesn't tell me how to serve it, but I'm gonna serve it over ice like everybody else. I'm probably gonna hate this. It'll probably be a fine Manhattan, to be perfectly honest, but I'm probably gonna hate it anyway. But in the interest of science, maybe this is a Manhattan that I won't hate, maybe. Also a Manhattan. It's fine. 
I just never want to see it again. Between the two, that one might have a little more evolution and nuance. I got cherry flavors a little bit more in that second one in the High West. Oh God, that makes me feel like shit. Just like instantly, I feel like shit. Okay, what's next? I don't know when Bacardi came out with these. I would not call these seltzers. I don't think they're even carbonated. Let's find out. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. They're pretty low proof. They're only 6%. All right, so here we go. What does it say about this thing, actually? Oh, it is sparkling water. So these are highballs. Probably not really appropriate for this episode. This is stupid. I thought there was gonna be a real pina colada in there. No, that's a piece of shit. I mean, it's an okay pineapple, like vodka seltzer, but it doesn't taste like a pina colada. It tastes a little bit like a pina colada. This is a rum punch. That's a beverage for mother-in-laws. I find it way too sweet. That's a Bahama Mama. That tastes like air freshener. Ooh, mmm, or like air fresher and um, Jolly Ranchers of some kind. Yeah, of the three, I guess the Pina Colada is the one to go with. But man, these are not good. But they're also not really cocktails. These are seltzers. They're carbonated seltzers. They don't belong in this episode. Get them out of here. But also, like, maybe that's useful information. I don't know. This is the Brooklyn Stinger. Interboro straight malt whiskey and lexical amaro liqueur with lemon and lime. It's seven percent. I don't know. That sounds cool, man. Right, my fucking eye. Points off. Right off. Right off the top, you're losing points. I'm just telling you right now. I get assaulted by you. Points off. Damn it, I had high hopes for that. It doesn't taste good. It tastes like puke. Maybe it's because I was expecting like a whiskey cocktail, but it tastes like a nasty IPA. If you told me, hey man, I got this stank ass IPA and I took a sip of it, I'd be like, okay, fine. My expectations would be different. But expecting some kind of like a whiskey cocktail, this registers as a as a glass of puke. This is gross as hell. Normally when I come to you like this, it's time for lunch, but today, Meredith, it's time for dinner because we've been in this studio for so long, we skipped lunch and now it's time for dinner. And lucky for us, we've got Factor to provide dinner because Factor is the sponsor of this episode. So thank you, Factor, for sponsoring how to drink like you know you are. Jalapeno lime cheddar chicken, Tuscan tomato chicken. Both of those sound lovely. Both of those are edible for me because I don't eat mammals. You know the great thing about Factor, they will cater to your meal preferences, whether that's gonna be non-gluten or you were a vegan or you're a pescatarian or you don't eat nuts or whatever it is, Factor will make it happen for you because every week you're gonna get to choose from 34 plus chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options that will promote a healthy lifestyle. And they're good. They're really good. We eat them all the time. We love them. So when you want to make these, you take them out of the box, you rip the cover off, you throw them in an oven. On a microwave, which is also an option, you would just put like holes or a slice. But here I like to use a convection oven. Throw them in the oven and wait about seven minutes at 375. And you might not need a glove to put them in, but you will need one to take them out, as you've noticed from me many times. Do you love going to the grocery store, Meredith? No, sure, we all don't. Nobody wants to go to the grocery store. Factor is one more meal I don't have to go buy at the grocery store. It saves me a lot of time. It's great. It shows up at my front door. I never have to leave my studio. And that's exactly what I want out of life is to just be in this room for the rest of it. The other thing that's great about Factor is they're very flexible. I can easily adjust the size of my order, how many meals I'm going to get. I can skip a week if I'm going to be out of town. Things are great. Things are great with Factor. All right, these are done. Let's get these meals out. Okay, come on over because I can't give it to you. It's too hot. You got to come in here. Mm, what is this? Some kind of... Some kind of delicious. Ooh, like oh, man. Mm -hmm. This is very good. Hell yeah. Thanks for killing it, Factor. This is delicious. Hey, if you want to get meals like this, why don't you head to factor75.com or click the link below. Use code HOWTODRINK50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box at checkout. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this episode, and for the rest of you, back to the show. So we got these June Shine cocktails with all these cool little skulls on them. We got a vodka mule, and we got a rum Mai Tai. And I don't know how you do a Mai Tai with 10% ABV. I think like 20%. But we'll find out. Let's go with the Mai Tai first. You ready? Here we go. One rum Mai Tai. Is it fizzy? I don't know if it's fizzy or if it's just opening up to the air. Oh, it does say rum with sparkling water. What the fuck, man? I think these are a lot of these are just like seltzers. Fuck your face. Oh, man. How dare you besmirch the name of Mai Tai with that June shine. I'm glad I didn't take your money all those years ago. Holy shit, that's bad. So far, honestly, the Jameson and the Jack throw a little lime in them. They're fine. 
They're fine. These guys are reaching for things they they're reaching for brass rings they cannot yet grasp. It's so hard to fuck up a vodka mule. Maybe this will be okay. You're gonna have way better mules, but I can't really endorse this. Like the difference here between literally just taking some decent ginger beer and throwing vodka and a lime twist in it versus this, it's like orders of magnitude worse. It is a flatter, weaker flavor. I'm sorry, I can't endorse this, it. bad. Meredith, hit me with the next can. What do I got here, a tequila Paloma? Yeah. Here we go, one tequila Paloma. That's not bad, it's under tart. It's another one where you, if you throw a twist of lime juice in there, it's gonna be, I guarantee, orders of magnitude better. It's just kind of flat feeling. It doesn't have the acidity that I want out of a Paloma. It also doesn't have the sweetness that like a straight up, you know, squirt and tequila is gonna have, like a traditional Paloma. But if you throw a little twist of lime juice in there, what you do, it's like a, pretend it's like a bottle of Corona, just shove it in, let's see how that is. I mean, that's got some life to it, it's got a little fire. Way better, way better. Orders of magnitude better. A totally respectable drink at that point. 5% alcohol, of course, low proof, but it's for a barbecue, for a backyard thing where you don't want people to get like knocked down dead drunk, this is great. Tastes like tequila, tastes like grapefruit. Put that twist in there, you really wake it up. It's a lot better. So this was Austin Cocktails Mojito, and I saw this and something about it excited me. One, okay, 12.5%. Seltzer water and agave with natural flavors. Lime vodka mojito? I didn't notice that. I feel like it should be rum. But... On the other hand, like the kind of rum you usually use in a mojito, it's probably fine. But yeah, something about this excited me. The one thing it doesn't is like, it looks like the branding for Austin Cocktails reminds me of like wine coolers. So I was a little dismissive of the brand at first, but like 12 and a half percent, that ain't no wine cooler. Still needs more lime, but not bad. I did screw up here though. All I saw was mojito, but now on closer inspection, I see cucumber vodka mojito. It is a cucumber vodka mojito. Don't expect a mojito. Uh, somebody's gonna like this. The problem with it is, I don't know if they're gonna reach for it. I think if they see that in a cooler, they're probably gonna be like, eh, I don't know. But if you give them no other options, they will. <laughs> hey y'all, it's time for cucumber mint mojitos. Uh, do you have any beer? I don't. <laughs> so drink up or leave, buddy. This is a cucumber lemon lime seltzer gin highball. Now, this one excited me. You know why? Two cocktails in each can. So that means we're dealing with cocktails here. And if you remember, something like Post Meridium, they use those half cans, those beautiful little cutie cans. 10% alcohol by volume, serve it over ice, so we'll do that. All right, here we go. This is the, uh, whatever this is. Really good, actually delicious. I'm really glad we did this one. Gin, cucumber, lemon, seltzer. Personally, I hate cucumber in a cocktail. I wish it wasn't in there, but of like a cucumber canned anything, the representation of it is good. This mostly is a gin and lemon seltzer highball, which is nice, with a little bit of cucumber in it. It's not so bad, and it's not very sweet either. It's actually quite good. To be perfectly blunt, this might be my favorite of them so far. And I think Salt Point has a whole line of these. I don't know if I got any other boxes of them. Generally speaking, if I like one product from a brand, it's not a bad idea to look at the others from them. Salt Point seems to know what they're doing. I do like these. Oh, what is this? This looks exciting. Micampo Mango Mule. There is like some kind of pulpy, fruity stuff in here. So that's actually exciting to me. Oh, shy. This is 17.6% alcohol by volume. So we're dealing with some cocktails now. I am reserving the right to throw seltzer onto this one because I think that might be necessary. It's because a mule without seltzer, I don't know. I'm gonna assume you don't drink it from the bottle. A mango mule made with reposado tequila liqueur and natural flavors. There's a comma there, so it's not tequila liqueur, it's reposado tequila, comma, liqueur and natural flavors. All right, this is without club soda added. I like that. I like that a lot. Mango mule is a hard thing for me to describe that as though, because there's no ginger notes in there that I'm detecting. Maybe lemongrass. Definitely mango, definitely tequila. Pretty well balanced, not overly sweet or anything like that. This is some club soda. I think it'll, I think it does probably want to be mixed with soda though. And like, you know, maybe like a one to one ratio. So think about there. Maybe like two parts this to one part seltzer. I think I overwatered it just now. No, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, I like that. The one problem I have with it for the purposes of this content, I don't know how practical something like this is for the out for the backyard barbecue scenario. But as far as it being drinkable and good, I give it pretty much full marks. I think this is pretty great. So it's always fun. It's always fun to find things that are good. All right, here we go. We got three more in the freezer. Let's just bust them out. This one is exciting. Batch and bottle, Reccia Breca, which 
Rekia. Rekia is a brand of vodka. So this is a Rekia Rhubarb Cosmo. Rhubarb Cosmopolitan made with vodka and orange liqueur. It is 25% ABV. Does not give me serving instructions. We'll put it in this guy. This has been in the freezer, so it's cold. Well, I mean, like, that's actually a really beautiful color. I'm not gonna fill my glass, but look at that, that pink and clear. It's a little syrupy looking. So I wonder if it wants some water, if it wants to be, you know, stirred or shaken. That is intense. I think it wants to be stirred or shaken, but I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. Let's, I'm actually gonna shake it real quick. Now, of course, for the purpose of this video, this is a failure, because we have to shake it. It's too much work. But... And to that end, Putting it in the freezer has probably hurt us. It's a prettier color even. It's so floral. It's so floral. Almost, uh, I mean, it reminds me of an elderflower kind of drink, but not really. This is a real cocktail. It is a perfectly acceptable cocktail. It is tasty. It is fine. I don't know that it's a cocktail I'm gonna be in the mood for every day because it's a very specific cocktail. To call it a Cosmo, it's, it's divorced from a Cosmo. It's pink. It's got vodka in it. And I think that it could have a little more of tartness in it as we go for our twist of lime. I don't think that's a bad call with anything generally, but certainly not this. I mean, sure, that's great. But now I'm shaking and I'm adding a twist. What labor am I saving at this point? But it's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. This is a batch and bottle Hendrix Gin Martini. Again, it's got a look kind of a syrupy look. I, I don't know if that's because it was in the freezer or if it's because it's supposed to have water added to it. I mean, that, that's a Hendrix Gin Martini, which I'm not in the mood for, but it is what it is. Oh man, and I can't fault him for that. It doesn't mean I want to have it right now, but it is what it is. Now I've got the uh, Campari brand bottled Negroni. They don't tell you what gin is in it, but they do tell you that gin is in it. They say, put it over ice. It's thick, but it might be thick because it was in the freezer. There we go, it's a Negroni now. That's a great Negroni. That's fine. I actually really like that. That's a pretty good Negroni. No complaints at all. Well done. The Campari bottle Negroni is fine. Do you want a big bottle of Negroni at your backyard party? If you do, power to you. I don't. I want a big bottle of Pina Colada. Pina Colada. So we got this Makalai Espresso Martini Vodka Villa ben Vanilla Bean Espresso Bean. There's no such thing as an espresso bean. It's just a roasted coffee bean. Chocolate and espresso natural flavors. Okay. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with natural flavors. They do kind of get a bad rap. And I've given them a bad rap. So. What do they say about serving? Listen to me. If you're going to make a bottled cocktail, you got to give me serving instructions. This is bullshit. If you don't give me serving instructions, up your nose with the rubber hose. You know what I'm saying? Presumably it doesn't get shaken or whatever over it. It smells like coffee. <laughs> That's freaking dangerous. That tastes like something you'd pick up at the Starbucks checkout. <laughs> like that is insane. It's sweet, but when you put sugar and coffee together, it's a nice thing, it's a nice thing. I prefer my coffee black in the morning, but like this tastes like any sweetened coffee dessert you'll ever have. 20% ABV, so it's like not really a joke. Yeah, you'll drink these in a hurry without realizing it and you will be drunk. So far from this batch of things that I found at a liquor store, the better drinks seem to be coming from uh, bottles, you know, like where there's a big batch of drinks in a bottle, not cans that each individual person can pop and top. You know what, the, you can use these at a party. You just gotta have it set up the right way, that's all. Alcacino, I fucking love that it's called Alcacino. It's amazing. So, vodka spiked original latte, drink it from the can, I'm sure. Oh, I love that. Six times distilled American vodka with coffee, cream, liqueur, natural flavors, 13 and a half percent by can from the Howie Spiked Company, Howie's driving around in a little VW van there. <laughs> Do you remember, have you ever seen Dunkachino? It's not Al anymore, it's Dunk. No. Oh man, you gotta see Dunkachino. The, sh the, the viewers are seeing it right now. What's my name? Dunkachino. It is a commercial that Al Pacino did for Dunkin' Donuts. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. And it is mwah. <laughs> Say hello to my chocolate blend. All right, so this is the Al Cacino, the Dunkachino. Oh, weird. It's tasty. It's very tasty. I mean, for 13.5% alcohol, holy shit, that'll knock your ass off. It's much more cream liquor, cream liqueur, like a Bailey's kind of thing. It's got a Bailey's kind of component to it. I don't think there's Bailey's in it, but there's something that approaches the flavor profile of Bailey's. It's fun to compare it to this. This reminds me of a, like a Starbucks sweetened cold brew. This reminds me of that like Starbucks latte energy drink that they sell that's like milk and coffee. 
It's fucking delicious is what this is. Oh my God. It's like a delicious coffee milkshake that will put you into the ground. This is what I want at my backyard barbecue. <laughs> Although if everybody's drinking these creamy coffee cans at your backyard barbecue and they may be having a beer between them, you better dig a trench for the puke because people are going to be sick. <laughs> people are going to be real sick. <laughs> That's it? Did we provide useful content today? I don't even know. Okay, so let me put it this way. I do think that of the canned beverages, these were the winners. You got your Jack and Coke, your Jameson and ginger ale, sort of. This Paloma, this bare ginger cucumber lime thing, highball seltzer, and this uh, Howie, Howie's gets it done. Howie's gets it done can of delicious, creamy, milky, cokey, nutty, cokey, nutty creamy coffee awesome beverage all good however i will say that the paloma the jack and coke and the whiskey and ginger all need a twist of mine they just do this was fine on its own this is outrageously fine on its own i'm in danger of funneling it right now and that's what i feel like about cans of the bottled stuff actually this batch of bottled cocktails all did exactly what they said they were going to do on the label I don't know if I can say that about, because we've done this before, we've done On the Rocks, we've done other brands, and if I think about this episode as an addendum on stuff we've kind of covered, you know, just like an update, I think they're getting it right now. I think that these bottled cocktails are way better than bottled cocktails I've seen in the past. These were all exactly what they said they were, and they were pretty good jobs of it too. The problem is, I mean, it's not a problem, it's just one thing to consider, they're not ready to drink. You gotta put them on ice, you gotta mix them, you gotta stir them, whatever. Maybe that's a suitable thing for your situation, maybe it's not. I feel like they kind of more so want to be in the fridge for you, sort of ready to go when you're done with work. They're not to put out at a party. I don't know that any of them are replacing a drink that's really hard for you to just make for yourself. You know, like that's, it's a weird brand. It's a weird product placement. You know what you do, maybe, honestly? You take this, you get a pitcher filled with ice. And I don't mean like crappy ice, but like good ice. And you pour this over it and you have it in the pitcher so that it's a little diluted and then people can just pour from the pitcher to a glass and you get yourself tiny glasses. You don't give them great big solo cups. You get little glasses. As silly as it is, a boxed cocktail from Craft House is probably the happier place to be than these things in a glass bottle. First off, they're all high alcohol and I don't know if I wanna have a glass bottle around you know this could turn into a, a weapon very quickly these are much harder to assault a person with you know they're just sort of floppy bags inside of there mm, floppy bags but you know you, you throw them in a fridge you get them chilled you put them on ice whatever they got a little pour spout that comes out of here yeah it's a tough call you want to put canned things out that aren't beers that aren't soft drinks you want to put out things that are easy for people to grab that are kind of a cocktail i liked these i liked all of these i love these I loved Post Meridium. I don't have any on set today, but you can, we'll link to the other video where I talked about those. And I liked Top Hat. I don't like June Shine. I'm just gonna throw them right under the bus. I don't like it. I think that they're a bad product. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, maybe you'll love my podcast that I do with Meredith. It's called Midnight Local. You will find it on YouTube where I will provide you for a link. We talk about movies. You will also find it wherever you get your podcasts, as we all say in the podcasting business. And I, as a cisgendered straight white man of a middle age, I am, of course, in the podcasting business. It comes with the territory. So please, observe my podcast and put it in your ear holes. We talk about movies over there. It's fun. And it's very fun. It's very much fun. We're just having a nice time. We're just two old friends having a nice time. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some more links for things for you to enjoy if you are new to the show. I hope you're having a great summer. And uh, uh, pour one for me at your next cookout. Good night, good luck, goodbye.